Hello friends, this video on changes around us part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So have you ever tried making idlis or have you ever seen how idlis are prepared? So for those who don't know, idlis are um, a very popular dish which is normally used as a breakfast item especially in the southern parts of India. So it, it's like it's prepared from a dough which is made of rice rice and also some certain pulses. So if you look at the dough which is used to prepare idli, this is how the dough looks like. But later how these idlis are prepared by steaming them or you can say by baking or steaming them and that's how you prepare the idlis. So here again you observe a change. So first initially you had the dough and later you have these idlis. Right? So what kind of change is this? Do you think that from the idlis you can get back the dough in any way? Not really. So this is an example of irreversible change again because you cannot reverse the process to get back the initial product. And in this case also a lot of chemical changes are also involved during the process of making idlis. Rotten vegetables. Now have you ever seen that if you keep a fruit or vegetable just like that uh, for a long time after a couple of days it starts to rotten. So that is also a change, right? So the black layers which you see on the potato is a change. The, the color of the apple or the orange changes to yellowish brown. So that is also a change. But what kind of change is this? Reversible or irreversible? Definitely irreversible because the rotten apple is never going to become a good apple again. And why it rottens? Because a lot of, uh, by the action of microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, etc. And their action spoils the food. So a lot of chemical reaction takes place during the process of spoiling. So once it becomes rotten, it is like irreversible because chemical composition of that fruit or vegetable has already changed. Think of baking a cake. So how do you bake a cake? Again here also you need a dough and that dough has a lot of constituents like it might have some oil, it might have some um, flour, it might have some vanilla essence, a lot of stuffs within it. And then you prepare the dough and then you bake that dough. So once the cake is prepared, do you think that you can get back the dough? No, again, it is also an irreversible change. So once the baking part is done, so have you observed something? We have discussed about so many examples of changes so far. So wherever we heat an object, whether we cook the object or we burn the object or we bake the object, so wherever this kind of heating is involved, uh, the chemical structure of the object changes and that is why uh, the change becomes an irreversible change. So we cannot get back the original substance. Think of knitting a sweater like your granny or your mommy would have uh, knitted a sweater using wool for you. So once the sweater is knitted you get a sweater which you can wear and roam around. So do you think it is reversible change because the sweater came from the wool. So they, your mom or your granny she had knit the sweater so well that you know the, the same wool got knitted in the form of a sweater for you. But is it reversible or irreversible? It is definitely a reversible change. That's because we can still get back the wool from the sweater. So you just pull out a thread and you just start pulling out the wool out of the sweater. So that means you can actually get entire wool from the sweater. So it is a reversible change. Flowering in plants. How do we get flowers from the birds? So the birds change into flower. So do you think that the reverse is also possible? So this is a change. The conversion of bud into flower is a change. But do you think the reverse is possible? Flower can change into bud? No. So this is again an irreversible change. Think of a little more complicated examples. For example, think of digestion of food. Now, do you have any idea how the food that we eat gets digested inside our body? Now, whatever we eat are complex food particles. Either we eat uh, vegetables or fruits or meat or fish. So, whatever we eat, they are in complex form. So, you, we chew them and then they go inside our stomach. And there are a lot of digestive enzymes act on the food and convert them from complex form to simple form that is how digestion happens so during digestion the complex food is broken down into its simplest form by the action of a lot of digestive enzymes 
so that means this is a change because the food is getting changed from one form to another but do you think it is reversible no because you cannot again bring join the simple form of food to form a complex form so this is an example of irreversible change thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.